Hey there, it's Phoebe from Quilted Pig. Thank you for joining me today in my studio. I'm glad to see you. I'm working on a couple of different projects at once, which if you're a quilter, you know how that goes. And so I was thinking about how I'm keeping these organized and I thought that I might share some of these ideas with you. So let's start out with this first one. This is a quilt that is large and it's called So Big. It's a giant sewing machine, it's really cute. Um, it goes in together in sections rather than in regular square blocks. So instead of just sewing blocks, you have to sew different rectangle sized pieces and they all intermingle with each other. So there's no sashing or anything like that. So what I've done is I have taken paper plates, one for each section, and I labeled it to follow the section numbers on the paper plates, excuse me, the section numbers to correspond with the pattern. And that way, when I'm ready to work on each section, I just pick up a plate, go sit down at the sewing machine, and start sewing. Now, speaking of quilts that go together in sections rather than just blocks, here's another. It's a little less complicated, so it's got a little simpler organization system. This one is called Jingle All the Way from Kimberbell, and it's got embroidered blocks combined with piece blocks and some just plain blocks. What I did for these is I took a list of all the pieces the blocks basically, even though they're all different sizes that are needed. And I just made a list. And as I complete each one, I put it in the bag and then mark it off my list. That way, when I sit down to sew, I can look at this and say, okay, well, the next thing I need is the tree snow globe. And then I can just take care of that. So bags come in handy. And in fact, here's another bag that is just a simple tote bag that I purchased at Dollar Tree a couple of years ago. And in it, this is actually my husband's project bag. In it, he's got his pattern right there. He's got some cut pieces right here. And he's also got some blocks that he has already begun piecing. So this is all here together. And when he's ready to sew, he just takes this whole bag to his sewing machine, sits down and starts working. And then when he's ready to put up for the day, Everything just goes back in the bag and it all stays together. So his pattern's all in one place if he needs to refer back to it, different things like that. But you don't have to use a bag. You can use tray. So I have these trays. I get a lot of them because um, my husband works outside and so he drinks a lot of Gatorade in the summer. And the Gatorade bottles that I buy him come in trays like this. And this is really handy because it's got about, I think the sides are probably about three inches tall. So nothing slides out of it and it's cardboard. So it's not slick. Everything sticks in it. So I'm working on a pattern in my head right now that is going to require a lot of high contrast between these white pieces and the dark pieces. And so having it laid out like this, I can look at the pieces and, you know, continue to think about in my mind, how am I going to put this together to make it work for me and what, what I'm seeing in my mind? How can I get that put together? Some other items that you can use to keep your projects together, pretty much any kind of container with a lid is great. Um, obviously, you're going to try to size your container to the project. And this particular one was some little stars that have one and a half inch centers. So as I cut those from scraps, I went through my scrap pile and cut these. I just put them in this trivia container and that kept them all together. And when I needed to sew some more stars, it has over 400 in the quilt. I would just reach in and get what I needed out of there. Which speaking of that, what I would do is before I went to a sew day or some other event like that, I would take this tray and this actually had uh, candy in it at Christmas a couple of years ago. And so I call it my hors d'oeuvre tray because I would take one of those little center pieces and then each of the corner pieces, so the four corner pieces and the side pieces and the pointy pieces for the star, and I'd stack them all up on a straight pin and set them in the tray like hors d'oeuvres. And so it was kind of a joke going to workshops and things like that because I'd take out my hors d'oeuvre tray and I had all of my, my blocks ready to start stitching. So I hope that this information will give you some good ideas of ways to organize your projects once you've got the pieces cut and you're just trying to keep it straight because maybe you don't have a dedicated sewing space where you can just leave it out all the time. I hope you'll give them a try. Take a look at different containers that you have around you and how they might work in your quilting and keeping things organized. I hope that you enjoyed the video and you'll give it a thumbs up, a like. I hope that you'll subscribe to the video and, or excuse me, subscribe to my channel. 
and I hope that you have a really good day. Thanks again for watching. Bye.